Uh, okay, so uh, I had to make this video. I didn't really want to, to be honest. It's totally unscripted. It's something that I don't usually do outside of my regular content. But I was just preparing for another video and Games Workshop released some news that I, I really want to talk about, feel really passionately about. And to be honest, uh, it can't really wait until next week, next Thursday, when my next video is due. Um, so this video is going to have like very little editing. Uh, sorry, but uh, it just couldn't wait. It just couldn't wait, really. So I just saw the Games Workshop have announced that their 40k army building app is going to be paywalled behind a subscription fee from the end of August. So if you want to use the Battleforge part of the app, which is like the army builder part, then you're going to need to begin to subscribe to Warhammer Plus, which is their Netflix style service. Now, uh, cynically, at the exact same time, they also have sent out an email to subscribers of Warhammer Plus saying that they're raising the price of that service to six pounds a month. Now, this is genuinely one of the most stupendously infuriating decisions I've ever seen Games Workshop make in like the 20 years that I've been involved with Warhammer. It is so crass, greedy, short-sighted. They are locking the easiest, most accessible way for someone to flirt with playing a new army or even uh, a, a, any army at all if they've never played Warhammer before. They're locking that away behind Behind a paywall and bundling it in a subscription service for a subpar platform that has a couple of okay animations in it. But not that many. Not that many animations. There's not a lot on Warhammer Plus. And this is a Netflix style platform that was already hard to justify the price of before they cynically raised it. Before they cynically raised the price. Just because of this new Battleforge app being added onto it. But don't worry. Don't worry though. Because Warhammer Plus is going to be worth the added extra because one of the most useful things the Games Workshop have ever made, something that makes the game easier for players to build an army with, to play the game, to get playing Warhammer 40k, is now going to be bundled in to Warhammer Plus. Huzzah! Thank you, Games Workshop! Thank you very much! So, this is such a boneheaded move. It doesn't make Warhammer Plus like seem like a better deal at all. It doesn't add value for Warhammer Plus subscribers. All it does is make it look like a really useful thing in the Warhammer app is not getting taken away from players. This is classic games workshop. They create goodwill with the launch of 10th edition, and then they immediately squander it. They spend it immediately, cash in a little short-term prize. 10th edition got so many people back into Warhammer 40k. I know, I know a lot of people who have just gotten back into Warhammer 40k again. Maybe they played it whenever they were younger. A lot of people I know who played Warhammer whenever they were teenagers have now gotten back into the game. They've been attracted to the accessibility, the fact that the new abilities are fun, everything Everything's kind of unique and it's easier to play, easier than 9th edition at least. And all of those people that I know are all using the Warhammer app to build lists with and to think about what to buy, to inform their purchasing decisions. And this change is going to hit them pretty hard. And it's going to be a reminder of just how much content GW can have for their audience. There's a lot of people who think that GW have gotten better in the last couple of years, but this is just, once again, another demonstration that they haven't. Because slamming a paywall onto a really useful app, a really useful army building tool, it's just going to be make most new players stop making lists. It's just gonna make them stop making lists. They're gonna stop fantasizing about armies and miniatures to buy. I mean, sure, a minority of players might subscribe six pounds, six quid a month for an army builder, but it won't be very many people interested in such a thing. This is a really dumb plan from Games Workshop. I mean, list builders are one of those things that make a game easier to engage with, but not so much that most people are willing to pay money for it. But it is enough people that get use out of it that a lot of them will be extremely annoyed when it's taken away, and they'll probably move on to other platforms for the utility of having an army builder that works. To be honest, there is no reason or excuse for this app to be paid for. Battleforge should not, not be charged for at all, even as part of Warhammer Plus. Games Workshop already make tons of money. They make plenty of money on the miniatures that they sell. In fact, 
they're selling more miniatures than they ever have before. So everything they should be doing right now is to encourage people to buy into Warhammer 40k to expand the game, the audience for the game. And that's something that the Warhammer 40k app does. It's not the best app in the world, but it is, you know, or at least before this, it was free and it got a lot of people into playing it. But no, DW would rather try and draw some money from people instead. And right now, it's the army building Battleforge part that is going to be charged for as part of Warhammer Plus, but I have no doubt that in the future when the codices start dropping, so Space Marines and Terranids next month, all of the content in those codices is going to be locked behind a paywall too. They did this with Age of Sigmar. When Age of Sigmar first released, they promised that all of the rules would be free for the game, but then all the faction rules were locked into the battle tomes only. So I think that's exactly what we're going to see with Warhammer 40k 10th edition, even after they've gotten all this praise, all this praise for having sold a free, a free game for everybody. And this isn't normal. It's not normal in wargaming. This isn't standard as part of the market. I know most people have only ever played Warhammer, but there are lots of other wargame companies out there, and most of them are more than happy to give the rules of their game games to players away for free because they know that a good fun game that is accessible means more people buying their miniatures. It's good business for the companies, for the players. It's just better for everyone. I mean, how come Malifaux, Infinity, Song of Ice and Fire, the Batman miniatures game, uh, Parabellum, the last, uh, with Conquest, the last argument of Kings, and more, all have free apps. All are making their games so much easier to play with at the table. They've all got free army builders. And yet the biggest, most profitable company in tabletop wargaming is not charging for access to their army builder as part of a subscription it's so cynical. It's so hostile to players for such an insignificant increase in profit. It's so dumb. It's going to drive away most informed players to free options like Battlescribe or even a platform like Wahapedia, who will no doubt return once all these codices start dropping and all the rules start getting locked behind paywalls. It really sucks. And I don't like, I don't like that, honestly, because platforms like Battlescribe have a ton of problems. And then, not only to lock the app behind Warhammer Plus, but then to raise the price of Warhammer Plus on top of that. It's so cynical. It's so cynical. Seriously. I mean, Games Workshop are incredibly profit-driven. I talk about that a lot on the channel, but this is so boneheaded. It is so short-sighted. Battleforge does not add value to Warhammer Plus. It takes away a tool that we've all been using already to build armies with. And no, it's not necessary for Games Workshop to maintain the app. They don't need to charge for it. So many other tabletop companies maintain free apps and they're making far less money than GW. And no, this isn't, the charging for this app isn't going to be used to pay workers at GW better wages. As the Honest Wargamer reported the other day, Kevin Roundtree, a GW CEO, made 1.4 million last year whereas the lowest 25% made around 25k and the highest the highest the highest paid employees at games workshop are making 36k and yet shareholder dividends doubled trying to make warhammer plus a, a thing isn't going to help anyone the way to make warhammer plus a successful platform is to make good content that people want to watch that's it. That's the magic trick. Right now, there's just not enough content on the platform. And most of it is of painting videos that honestly just don't offer much value at all. Or you can watch a bunch of battle reports that are genuinely aped by free content on YouTube made by passionate fans. Oh, and of course, you've got some cool animations. Those are neat, I guess. This isn't even going to make them very much money. It's so stupid. It's so disappointing. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of 40k lately. Maybe this is why I've been hit particularly hard by this. And as many uh, problems as 10th edition Warhammer has, I've actually been enjoying the game. I've been using some custom rules like activation dice from Bolt Action, and I've been making a ton of different army lists for all the different collections that I have, all the different armies that I collect. And the moment that this Battleforge gets locked behind a paywall, I'm going to stop making lists. I'm going to stop making lists. And I guarantee I'm going to stop buying as many 
many miniatures. So apologies, this wasn't a very eloquent uh, video, it wasn't filled with jokes and fun times, but I've, I've been seeing a lot of new people start playing 40k recently and get into wargaming, and this is just a stark reminder for how much Games Workshop just want to see their consumer base, like cattle, to be exploited. I'm, I'm really genuinely mad about this one, I just couldn't wait. Inexcusable. So Games Workshop said that they'd start charging for the app uh, on the actual app itself. They did say that it was only going to be temporarily free, and I kept hoping that they'd reconsider consider it because they'd see how many people were using the app and how necessary it was for the game and how much of a slam dunk it's been. I mean, it's not the best wargaming app in the world, but it was kind of functional, especially for a Games Workshop uh, product. It was incredibly functional. But no, they, they weren't changed. They weren't swayed by the fact that it was incredibly useful. In fact, that probably has hastened them along and their plan to, to, make, to make it be charged for. Man, even after 20 years of dealing with Games Workshop's bullshit, I still keep getting surprised. Uh, big thanks to all my patrons for their support, especially Sonic Bread, Crypto Kev, um, Mistress Arby, Novani, and Travis Hunter. I really appreciate it, guys. I'll catch y'all in the next one. I had to put out something because I really am frustrated, and I, I, I need to do a Combat Patrol review soon. So thanks very much. I'll see you. Bye-bye.